As you can see, we can no longer record these videos in church due to the lockdown, but we will continue to broadcast two videos a week from our homes. Today is the Feast of the Annunciation, when we remember the visit of the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary, when Mary was told that she would conceive and bear in her womb the one who would be the Messiah, the Christ, the long-expected one of Israel, the Son of God. This is essential to the Christian faith. It is that moment at which the divine life is fused to our own humanity and offers us fleshly beings the chance to grow towards God. I want to focus on one aspect of this glorious narrative, which I think is of particular importance given the current state of the world. So we'll open in a minute with some opening prayers, and then I'll read the account from Luke's Gospel of the Annunciation and offer a short thought on that, and we'll conclude with another prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. So here is the collect and the reading for this Feast of the Annunciation. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that... As we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought into the same glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here begins the 26th verse of the first chapter of the Gospel, according to St. Luke. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, for what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also <laughs> conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. A child is conceived in the womb of a virgin. A child is conceived in the womb of a barren old woman. In both of these cases, life springs forth unexpectedly. Life from the womb of a virgin, life from a barren womb. Life in unexpected circumstances. And so it is with God's relationship with creation from the very start. The opening of the book of Genesis, that first book of that great compendium of texts that we call the Bible, begins with the creation narrative. We hear how God creates the universe and everything that is therein from 
Nothing. The very last page of the very last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, ends with the image of the tree of life, flourishing, growing in the new Jerusalem. And so it is. God offers us life, and life abundantly. We as Christians, therefore, have a vocation. We must always seek out life. When we find life, we must do what we can to nurture it. And we must protest when we see life being trampled on or distorted or stamped out. Now, that's all very well and good, you may say, in the abstract. But what am I to do in the middle of isolation when I turn on the TV or read the paper and I see only sickness and suffering, decay and death. Where is the gift of life here? How am I to seek out life in this circumstance? Well, the answer, I think, comes from the reaction of the Virgin Mary to the gift of life that she is offered by the angel. Initially, of course, she's scared, and who can blame her? But when she's had a moment to think about it, she doesn't respond by saying, No, thank you, I'm busy. I have a wedding to plan with my husband, with my fiancé, Joseph. Or, no, thank you, what will people say? I'm a virgin if I'm found to have a child in my womb. She doesn't say, No, thank you, I have a life of my own to plan. Instead, she responds with those beautiful, simple words. I am a servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Mary responds to the gift of life that she is offered by offering that gift back to God in service. I am a servant of the Lord. And this, I think, sets a wonderful pattern for us. Over the coming weeks, possibly months, we don't know how long, we will have time to sit and reflect on the gift of life that we have been given, and perhaps to reflect on what we've been doing wrong with that gift. Have we been abusing it? Have we been misusing it? Have we been selfish with the gift of life offered to us? And perhaps this awful coronavirus is God's gift to us as well. It is the chance to sit and to say, where have we been going wrong as a society? Where have I been going wrong as an individual? Where have I been misusing the glorious gift of life that God has given me? And where do I find purpose in my life? Is my life dedicated selfishly to my own needs? Is my life defined by what I wear, by the restaurants I eat in, by the clubs I belong to, by the fashion brands that I favour? Is my life defined by the political causes that I espouse, by the fashionable opinions that I inhabit? Is my life defined by selfishness? and greed. Have I said, I am a servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And who knows, maybe when this whole thing is over, God shall bring new life forth unexpectedly out of the suffering and misery caused by this dreadful virus because that is what God does. He brings life forth in unexpected circumstances. So it's difficult at this time, but let us make that our fervent hope and prayer to reflect on how we can serve God better through prayer, through attendance of services, even if that is these days online e-services, and through serving our community as God would have us do in whatever way is available to us. May the Blessed Virgin Mary pray for us, and may God help us to grow, to use our lives in service of him. I'll now end with a prayer by Eric Milner White. 
It's called, Be it unto me according to thy word. Lord, when daily thine angel cometh to me, messenger of immortal grace, summoner to mortal choice, let me daily expect thy divine word and learn by thy divine light to accept and to perform thy will. Be it unto me according to thy word. Give me grace to abandon myself, to obey thee joyfully and promptly, to serve thy sure design and to finish my calling even as Mary, maiden and mother, accepted all, surrendered all, completed all. And unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given, whose name is called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, henceforth, even for ever. O Lord my God, be it unto me according to thy word. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.